Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sam Rocha and I am going to be teaching a course this summer called uh, EDST, which is the prefix for the Department of Educational Studies, uh, in which I'm an associate professor, um, 595, which is the uh, calendar listing for a course uh, which is titled Philosophical Research and Education. Um, this is a course that uh, has a little bit of history to it, and also it's a course that I'll be teaching during this COVID-19 uh, time. So it'll be entirely online, uh, split between synchronous and asynchronous uh, meetings, that is synchronous meetings and then asynchronous uh, stuff to do. Um, I wanted to make this video for a few reasons. One is to be able to give a bit of the backstory uh, without typing it all out in lengthy prose. Uh, the second was to be able to speak and kind of appear in video form uh, to some of the, uh, you who are going to be in this class uh, whom I haven't met before. Um, I think it's, uh, well, occasionally uh, I, I kind of wonder when my syllabi go out early um, what kind of an impression they give. Uh, in this case, um, I wanted to make sure that I sent something uh, that was a little bit more personal, even me as a person, uh, to go along with the materials that I just sent out this weekend or will be sending out early this week. Um, I guess I'll start with the history um, and also I'll cover some of the details. I'm sure there'll be other details to be covered and I want everyone to feel really free to send me an email. Um, I guess the, the first detail I cover is, is sort of to whom this is addressed. Um, in the sense of who's going to be in this class. Uh, first and foremost, and um, uh, most importantly really, is the 20 people who are enrolled in the class right now. The class is full. Um, I may allow an, uh, a registered audit addition here or there, but I really don't plan to uh, um, inflate the uh, enrollment in the class beyond the present 20 that are enrolled. Um, part of that reason is because uh, I want to real, really be able to focus on, um, on those of you within the 20, especially those of you taking it for credit. Um, and uh, the variety of the people enrolled in this class is uh, quite, uh, uh, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of variety. Uh, we have students who are enrolled in it uh, from uh, some of the MED, Masters of Education, um, uh, students within uh, our department and, and especially within our Skippy program, Society, Culture, and Politics and Education. Um, but we also have some other students, um, we, uh, MED students that is. We also have some master's students, Masters of Arts, uh, both within our department and I believe, I, I don't have the roster in front of me, but even maybe from a, f a couple other departments. Um, and you're all very welcome. Uh, we have some PhD students. Um, uh, both from the uh, from our department and also I believe from ECP um, might be a couple other there that I that I um, forgot and I apologize for that um, and we have some EDD students as well within our uh, doctorate in education program um, so the um, in effect this is a graduate seminar that has enrolled every single degree uh, or every single credential that um, that this department offers is, is presently enrolled in this class. Uh, I think it's important to, to, to say that because I'm really mindful of the fact that uh, you, in some cases, your programs of study and the kinds of outcomes you're looking to take out of a course like this um, really vary to the extreme. Um, uh, some of you are, uh, might be interested in this uh, really as a kind of coursework elective uh, to uh, add to uh, your uh, chosen you know, coursework in a more coursework based uh, credential. And I want to give you an opportunity to hopefully take advantage of it on those terms. In other cases, uh, some of you are looking at this as really a kind of value added piece um, for something like almost a methods or methodological framing for your own research, uh, for your theses or dissertations. Um, I think this course functions really well for that as well, and I want to be able to offer it um, as, 
uh, as as full an option for that as possible. So before I go into the history, um, given these two groups, uh, the course for those who are taking the course for credit, uh, there are a few of you auditing and you're very welcome uh, as well. Um, but for those who are taking this course for credit, um, I've actually designed the course in the sense, in a way in which you really have two options. Uh, the first option is called the course only option. This option is frankly uh, probably designed for the student who's really taking it um, as an elective within a coursework based degree. Um, by the way, some of you who are MED students are actually looking to this course to inform what will be your graduating paper. So even though you might have the same um, uh, MED degree uh, credential you're seeking, uh, your purposes here might also vary. So there could be variety uh, uh, all over the place, right? Um, it also might be the case that <laughs> um, for some of you, you might see more value added to your eventual uh, research projects by doing the course only version, which I'm going to say a little bit about. And you might choose that version too. I, I don't want to decide out of hand what you choose, but I I developed the course only option primarily for those who would be taking uh, this course as kind of a standalone piece of coursework, not so much as a methodological um, addition to future research or scholarship down the road. The course only option is pretty simple. It basically is doing all the work on the inside of the course with not with without having any kind of a like final paper or final assignment on the very back end. So all of your time will be really invested into the um, the middle container of the course, and you won't need to uh, pull time away from that to then at the same time develop a project to turn to turn in after the three weeks. Um, and what that entails is attending all of our synchronous meetings, which will happen on Zoom, uh, listening to all of the asynchronous lectures, which will be uploaded um, to SoundCloud. And you can download them there if you'd like to. There's an app. There's a lot of different. Um, uh, there's a lot of um, options for SoundCloud in that case. And then in, in addition to those two um, kind of showing up kind of uh, things uh, to complete the thirteen. Um, uh, flashpoints writing assignments, which are very short. Uh, I think right now I have it listed as like 200 to 250 words. Truthfully, it's really like no more than 250, but nothing like, you know, hopefully more than, you know, a sentence or <laughs> something ridiculous. Um, uh, but they're meant to be very short, very fast, very much uh, almost more like reactions um, in intuition based um, responses. Uh, some of that is for the for the um, for the exercise of the flashpoint writing uh, and I can say a, a good deal more about that and how that developed and that'll come up a little bit in the history of the course. Um, but the other reason is that we only have three weeks and so I don't want really uh, anyone to, to be over overburdened by this um, so it's meant to not take too much time but it should document and chronicle um, a, uh, a series of interactions with some themes that I've selected that I believe will um, interface with the readings and the discussions and the lectures and everything else going on. Um, so there are 13 in total, so that'll be 13. Um, I believe the word count, if you total it, comes up to around 3,000 words. So I think it comes around to like a, you know, modest uh, writing assignment in total. Um, uh, but nonetheless, that's the um, that's the course only option. It's 25% attendance uh, through Zoom, 25% participation, which just entails listening um, on SoundCloud, and then 50% or the bulk or half of it will be uh, through this kind of uh, writing that'll happen through a WordPress blog site, the same site by the way where the course packet is uploaded. The second option for the course is called Draft Added. And what that really means is simply that uh, I have removed some of the um, burdens of the flashpoints writing on the inside so that you could kind of reinvest that time into developing some kind of a project that you'll turn at, at the end. Given the three weeks and also given this, the, the major theme of drafts that we're going to take up in this course, um, I don't expect these final assignments to be turned in to really be anything but really drafts, and in many cases very early drafts. 
Um, some of you, I think, already know exactly what they're going to be. It's going to be a draft of uh, a proposal or a, a chapter of a dissertation or some stuff like that. In other cases, you might come up with other things. My only criteria really for a draft is that it's something that's, that's going to concretely um, uh, be practical to you within your course of study, uh, whatever that may be, and it should be substantial in, in the sense of being um, intellectually uh, engaged uh, with the subject matter or some subject matter that's related to what the course is uh, dealing with. Um, my sense is if you don't have a real strong or clear sense right now about what that draft might be, I would be inclined to to, to probably consider taking the course only option, whereas if you have a really strong sense of what that draft would be, uh, then that would be an indication that you might want to take that second option. Um, anyway, those are the two kind of streams um, for the uh, for those taking the course for credit, then there's, there's those who are auditing. There's another category, though, of people who are going to be joining us, and I want you all to feel very welcome, too. I've spent most of my time now first addressing uh, those who are uh, kind of on the record. But because of the unique circumstances of the COVID-19 uh, virus and because of the unique circumstances of me taking this course online, um, I kind of tested through Twitter um, the degree of interest to which people might want to just sit in very informally uh, on this course just out of your interest and the response I got was relatively substantial 30 35 uh, people who were seriously interested in uh, sitting in on the course uh, some of them uh, uh, some of you who I'm speaking to uh, graduate students um, at various places uh, just off the top of my head I think Austin College um, University of Florida or Florida University, yikes. Uh, 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 University of Alberta, uh, quite, a f quite a few, I think, from there. Um, and, and a few other universities. Also some, uh, some of my colleagues, some professors uh, and uh, uh, academics um, from uh, various places in the world, as I recall, Ireland, uh, uh, the Philippines, um, uh, I, 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 uh, Wisconsin, I believe, uh, the United States. And then people taking this for general interest, uh, including some people here locally, uh, who I know, um, and uh, some who I don't know. Um, all of you are, are quite welcome. Um, you're completely welcome to participate by attending our synchronous meetings, by listening to the uh, uh, asynchronous lectures. Part of the reason why we're not using Canvas, which is very much a kind of UBC-only um, uh, online show, is so that everything is public-facing and publicly available. Um, and of course, if you want to uh, participate with the Flashpoint writing, um, uh, I think you should feel free to jump on in uh, if you want to. Uh, it's obviously uh, a very free offer, so you don't need to feel obligated. Uh, and the same goes, by the way, for those who are auditing. If you want, if you want to write a few of these and engage like that, I think that'd be fine. Um, at any rate. Um, I just want those who are enrolled to know uh, that there will be this kind of uh, 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 this audience of sit-ins who will be joining us. Uh, I haven't uh, planned very carefully probably the logistics of um, how we'll make that work in the Zoom context, but I would ask for your um, generosity of spirit across the board, um, and uh, and and we'll just we'll do our best, you know, together. Um, okay, so that that kind of addresses. Who's in the class? Um, the only people I left out, including s people who are also going to be sitting in on the class, uh, will be some of the guests. Uh, I'm kind of a pseudo guest. Uh, I'm teaching the class and I'm the guest for a few weeks. Um, but these guests are the authors of some of the readings we'll be doing. All of these authors are people doing philosophical research and education, as I understand it, and you'll see at length how I understand that. Um, here at UBC, uh, and all of the work that that uh, that we have shared in the course uh, reading packet is work that is at various stages of being in draft form. In some cases, revisions of drafts that are in fairly um, still earlier stages, but that have nonetheless been um, 
submitted for a course and conferenced and revised and whatnot. And in other cases, uh, preprints of, um, in this case, a chapter that's already, you know, in press and will appear soon. And then I think everything else is kind of in between those stages of, of draft form. Uh, even the artwork in the course packet I've included are two uh, uh, draft paintings by John Baldacchino, a uh, uh, visual artist and also a philosopher of education and art education teacher at University of Wisconsin. Um, and uh, and so, th so this is in some sense the theme is drafts. Um, I guess that's a material theme. Uh, the philosophical theme, if if there if there if we need to make a difference between the material theme and the philosophical theme, would really be um, poetics, or what I've called I've called this a seminar on the poetics of scholarship. What I mean by poetics is probably not as poetic as uh, the term might seem to be. Um, it doesn't have to do with stanzas in this case, not necessarily, by the way. I, I suppose it could, um, but it really re refers to what the Greek and Latin uh, roots of that word, poesis, poesis, uh, which means um, to make. Uh, so these drafts are works. They're, they're, they're in, in each of them is an opus, a, a work. Uh, and a work is something that has to be made. And the making of the work is its poetics in this way of thinking of it. So the question that will motivate um, our study of these drafts is really the question of poesis, which is, uh, how do you make that? How did you make that? Why are you making that? Um, it's really going to be a course where we're going to take up questions of almost, you could say, composition. This will force us to read these works, which I think uh, are mostly fairly interesting. Maybe mine are less so, but the work we're reading is going to be, in some cases, um, have really rich content. And I'm going to insist throughout the seminar that this is not a seminar on uh, that Nell Nodding's Ethics of Care, nor is it a seminar on uh, phenomenology. Uh, some of you might press me to ask me if I really mean that, but uh, nor is it a seminar on uh, philosophy of education in, in, this, in the sense of like a survey of the uh, main ideas in that tradition uh, or that field. Uh, which is my field, um, in the field of many who will be presenting, or in curriculum theory, um, I'll, I will insist uh, that this is going, the, the question will not be really to take up the content, but to take up really uh, a different way of reading, which is not reading so much for content, but for almost form and for composition and for the poetic question, how is this made? How does one make this? Why would one make this? Uh, what are the conditions for making uh, uh, this kind of a thing, and um, uh, maybe I can make that thing, or maybe I don't want to make that thing, or whatever comes up from that, but the question of making is going to be central. Um, why the question of making? Well, to go a bit further back and to introduce the, um, uh, the guests a bit more, one of the guests is my colleague, Claudia Rutenberg, who um, uh, well, frankly, she, she I think, has uh, uh, been thinking and writing about this particular question of how do philosophers of education make what they make, do what they do, uh, longer than I have, and, uh, and definitely longer in print than I have. Uh, and she has a lovely chapter that's a follow-up to her edited book on exactly this question that uh, she was generous to share with me in an earlier draft form. And the moment that this course came together on these terms, I just had to ask her to include it. She was very generous to let us read it and also to join us um, for a Zoom meeting where we can uh, talk more about, about that. And actually, we're, she's going to kick off the seminar. Uh, the other five authors are, are students uh, of mine, uh, some of whom I supervise, co-supervise, others who I uh, uh, am on uh, their doctoral committees. Um, but primarily they're my students in the sense that they were my students in the, the first iteration of this class, which took place uh, last summer during uh, the summer uh, first term, uh, summer term one. Um, all of the works they're sharing, uh, grow out of what they submitted for that course. Some of them have changed drastically, um, but they've gone through several stages, both being submitted for the course of, of last year, the same course taught last year, um, 
and then submitted to some conferences, presented, and in different stages of uh, 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 moving towards publication. Um, I, uh, I guess I should say that uh, when you include what I did, um, my, my work that is in this uh, course is also work that I did in the last iteration. Um, when I first had to teach the course, um, my sense was that I wanted to kind of uh, do something along the lines of um, if you want to learn how to cook or if you want to learn how to uh, play music, uh, to just kind of bring people in the kitchen, bring people into the studio and, uh, and, and cook some food and, and play some music and, uh, and then invite them to kind of compose uh, some small things and that's where the flashpoints writing comes in, uh, but really to focus on through osmosis or whatever mysterious magic, uh, come to a point where they would offer their own uh, rendition of, of of some work, and uh, so so that's what we did last summer. And so what I did is every single day that the course met, I uh, I wrote from about eight or nine in the morning until about four o'clock in the afternoon. I jumped on my bicycle, rode to I live in Westbrook Village. That's where I'm talking to you now. Uh, drove uh, rode north to my office and printed off. Uh, what I had written, and I went downstairs and I read it. And those lectures that I read, um, 12 of them, uh, I compiled into a, a monograph uh, for a book. Um, and the book is on philosophical research and education. Um, and I submitted it to one press. It, it made it uh, it made it through the first round and then not through the second. And so now I have it uh, under review at another press. Um, I'm basically sharing it now. Uh, at the time, I think I was interested in both showing people maybe um, an intimate look at how this work gets made, but also wanted to share some ideas. And I think last seminar, uh, I tried to make it methodological, but we ended up, I think, talking and, and arguing a great deal uh, fruitfully about a, a number of the ideas. Um, and that was good, uh, but now that it's been composed and now that there's some distance, I think there's more um, more to be said and more to be explored on this more strictly poetic or uh, question of making. And so that's what we're gonna try and do there as well. Altogether, I think the page count comes out to uh, around 294, 95 pages. Uh, they're not divided up entirely equally. Um, I have kind of front-loaded the course in terms of heavier uh, amounts of reading and lightened off the reading on the back end. Uh, there is no reading going in for the first day and also going in for the last day. So, um, you know, not evenly distributed, but, you know, give or take about 300, uh, it's about 100 pages a week uh, or so, uh, which is pretty normal for a graduate class in, in my experience or in, in the courses I teach. Um, of course, condense into three weeks for three credit hours. I mean, actually, I would I would probably assign more, but I'm really happy with uh, uh, with these readings, and I think that we'll we'll, uh, we'll be able we'll have a lot uh, a lot of material in our hands. Um, I was reading these lectures last year, and as you might imagine, like you know, these courses were pretty intense and pretty dry. You know, it's literally me walking in with a freshly printed manuscript and just you know reading with some comments off the page, a few interjections and questions. Uh, we usually just get really tired and take a small break and come back and finish it up. And so to kind of breathe a little bit of life in the class and get a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a kind of feedback loop, um, I invited us to write these flashpoints uh, uh, writings, which were, I really left without themes and really with almost no direction whatsoever. Um, Maybe some of my students who were there last year will correct me on this, but uh, we spent uh, two days total, um, uh, the first half of class for two days total, uh, reading these flashpoints um, uh, that people had written. I didn't write any. Um, I was already writing and talking enough. And, uh, and talking a bit about them, and I, I think that for some people, they these were... Uh, a stepping stone into what they ended up writing about, and in other cases, they were just a, it was a great creative exercise, and um, uh, it uh, yeah, I, I just thought it was a really positive aspect of that class, and so I've uh, actually uh, 
made it into a much larger component in this class. Um, the Flashpoint's um, title really comes from a book edited by a, a number of people, Sarah Travis, Tyson Lewis, and a few others. I, I unfortunately am not remembering their names. Um, which was very short chapters uh, on experiences, uh, uh, first-hand anecdotal experiences of, um, as I recall, I believe, of like uh, of race or in class or something. I think it was race, actually. Um, and I was asked to write uh, one of these uh, chapters, and, and I did. Um, and it, um, it was very evocative, it was very quick, it was very fast, both in composition and also it was very short, so uh, the turnaround time was very tight. And um, yeah, I kind of themed this off of that experience. Uh, I think now with the class it's grown into something else. Um, but yeah, so you could say that this course is a, um, a second take or a 2.0 of last summer's course. The last bit of context, and probably the most important bit of context, is that uh, I was not expecting to teach this course. I was not expecting it to um, happen this summer. Um, I was uh, planning uh, up until mid-March to go on sabbatical uh, for one year, starting on July 1st. Uh, because of the circumstances, I was uh, fortunate to be offered uh, the, um, the ability to postpone my sabbatical for a year. So uh, after doing that, I needed to, of course, be assigned um, a teaching load. And uh, since I had taught the course just last summer, it made sense uh, to uh, see if it could uh, enroll a sufficient amount of students to, to do it this summer. So um, I admit fully that um, this iteration of the course is in many ways a, a bit of a surprise to me, um, and I hope that that sense, though, of, of surprise, that sense of um, uh, being unexpected is hopefully uh, something we can use, um, uh, can maybe lighten the mood a little bit, um, but also know that I take this extremely seriously, and I, and I, and I really do want to uh, try as best as I'm able to the degree that it's possible to uh, offer each and every one of you as uh, as close to a to a live interaction as as, as we might um, as we might want other otherwise um, I have to admit I'm very uh, confused about the mediated telepresence of uh, of teaching and learning online um, but I, I'm not cynical about it I have I I spent a lot of time in libraries just reading books by myself and it's not clear to me what the difference is between the kind of autodidactic experience in the library stacks and, and this kind of experience and, and and the live experience which can sometimes be disappointing. So I don't have any strong biases for or against uh, any of this stuff uh, but I've never ever taught online before and I've never taken a course online so um, I... Uh, uh, I'm nervous for sure. Um, I'm a bit uh, uh, concerned, maybe. But uh, it, uh, on the whole, I've lived a pretty active digital life, uh, and I continue to live a pretty active digital life. And so I'll try to um, play to my strengths, to the things that I know, uh, and that'll explain a, a number of the decisions I make. At any rate, that should give you a, um, a fuller view of, of of the details of this course of who this course is for, um, who this course uh, uh, it is going to uh, uh, feature, um, the primary themes of the course, some of the details, and, um, and of course my own motivations both from a logistical standpoint and hopefully some sense of my own uh, feelings on the matter. Uh, I invite each and every one of you, um, if you have any questions whatsoever, to send me an email. Um, my email is sam.rocha at ubc.ca. And um, if you are interested uh, in sitting in on the course and you're not enrolled in the course, or you are and you want to invite someone, uh, it's, an open, it's an open door. Uh, it's an open digital uh, door. Uh, everyone and anyone, as far as I'm concerned, is invited. Uh, I don't want to. Um, uh, I don't want to close down any 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 potential. And I suppose if 
if, if things get out of hand or if something has to be done, I'll do it. But uh, I'd like to operate in uh, what might be called naive, but I would like to say is uh, uh, just full of hope and uh, uh, optimism about the promise of, of what uh, I can learn uh, going into this course with you and uh, and what we might be able to uh, to make of it together during this rather uh, unusual time uh, of being uh, being alive in the world so uh, I uh, that's that's it and uh, I wish you all the very best and uh, I thank you for watching this video and of course for uh, showing some interest in this course and for those who decide to do take to, to take the course uh, I look forward to uh, to meeting you uh, in a more uh, interactive way than, than this here. All right. Goodbye